All right, we're back. Thanks for tuning in again, folks. You're listening to the Drew Marshall Show. We're streaming live at drewmarshall.ca. We're on joyradio.ca and across the GTA on the AM 12, 1250. On the AM 1250. You can find us on the Google. I don't know why I'm talking like I'm 80 years old. Uh, it's time for our segment called Drew's Pilgrimage Preparation. Uh, this October, right after my first grandchild was born, I'll be heading out on the Camino de Santiago. For well over a thousand years, millions of pil- pilgrims have walked the way of St. James. The most popular route being almost 800 kilometers, beginning in France, over the Pyrenees Mountains, across northern Spain to the Atlantic. And just to make things interesting, I've decided I'm going to do the entire trail in a vow of silence. So along the way, I'm going to be writing about my experiences interacting with other pilgrims without being able to speak to them. That should be awkwardly interesting. And uh, we'll be posting uh, all of those uh, updates on our on our uh, website, drewmarshall.ca. It was going to be on our Facebook page, but now it's going to be on our website. So the plan is to finish the Camino on my 50th birthday, November 30th. And, uh, you know, a little something momentous, a great bucket list thing to do before you turn 50. Every Saturday in July, the last month of uh, season 13, I've been interviewing a variety of Camino gurus. Next week on the show is Andrew McCarthy. You might remember him from the Brat Pack days. He was in St. Elmo's Fire, Pretty in Pink, a whole bunch of different movies. Tori, you don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? 21-year-olds. <laughs> so, uh, but today, we have um, some different Camino gurus. Moni and Alberto. Alberto. That's how you have to say it, too, right? Al- <laughs> you have to say it very well. <laughs> Alberto. Moni and Alberto. Uh, they are award-winning <laughs> authors, uh, artists, pilgrims who have chosen to dedicate their life's journey to the inner transformation, to awakening the sacred within and sharing its gift with the world. They each walked the 800-kilometer Camino in northern Spain, where they actually met and fell in love. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a love story as well. (laughs) And later that same year, um, I guess it worked out because they walked another 5,000 kilometers from Rome to Jerusalem on a pilgrimage for peace that lasted 13 months and took them through 13 countries. Those are bad luck numbers. I don't know why you, get, why you didn't go to 14. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Thank you for coming. You guys live up in the Ottawa area. Is that right, Moni? Yeah, yes. we do, actually. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, you don't know that yet. You don't know what's happening. <laughs> no idea what you're in for. Well, it's like pilgrimage, right? A journey into the unknown. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know the love story. I want to go right to that. <laughs> I am a love story junkie. I, I come across <laughs> like a big meathead who doesn't care, but I am a, just a complete mushbag when it comes to love stories. Love it. So. <laughs> who wants to start spill? Can we wait? Can Can Alberto say? Because if he says okay. if he says the love story, it will sound may, much better, muy bueno. I can't compete with that accent. No, so not at all. Right, no. You go ahead. Would, would be my pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so wait. Let I want to tell me about the first time you saw her. Well, the first time that I saw her was the day that I arrived to Finisterre to this town that is three days away, or like the 100 kilometers from Santiago. I had a, a ride to Santiago. I felt that the still there was something that I didn't reach. I was feeling that what I was looking for, I didn't, I didn't get it. Then I decided to walk these three days extra to the town of Finisterre that literally mean the end of the world. Right. So if people remember from the movie, The Way, yes. you get to uh, the Camino de Santiago de Compostela, the cathedral, you know, the, uh, is it a, it's a cathedral, it's isn't like it? It's a okay. cathedral. Yeah. Beautiful. And, yeah. and that's the end of it. Um, but then there's, if you want to walk three more days to the coast, yes, then that's the cooler way to do it. Uh, I, I will recommend yes. a lot. Plus, like, you can have a bath in the ocean. Yes. <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> Carefully. It's very, it's frigid. It's the Atlantic I waters see. and yeah. the waves are huge. Are so they? just be aware. It's not like, you know, going into mm-hmm. a Mediterranean. Day. No, okay. It's not All like right. that. All right. <laughs> okay. It's too for the symbol that had the end of the world uh, because uh, in the past, um, pilgrims, uh, religious or not, uh, they are right there for like to do like that rebirth. The water they they do like the baptizing, right? The baptizing, baptizing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and they go in the waters. They they burn their clothes. It's like a new beginning right. in life. They leave the old uh, 
the old ego, the old personality, and start a new self. Right. And the, that attracted to me so much. And that was in that town when I arrived to that town. It's the first day that I arrived was when I met uh, Moni. I'm sorry, what, you knew the day? You remember the day? Uh, it was at the end of uh, July. The, I will say that was thir the 30th of July. Um, July 30th. July 30th. Okay. Yeah. July 30th. And so, oh, 2001. So, yeah. so how did you see her? Like across a crowded room? <laughs> was she swimming in the ocean screaming because no. it was cold? <laughs> <laughs> it's another pilgrim which uh, I walked that the last three days. Uh, no, the last two days present me uh, to her. Oh, so uh, somebody else introduced you to her. Exactly, Got because it. I didn't speak English at that time. Right. And, and she didn't speak Spanish either. No. Then she came, I well, remember. But you know what a universal language is? A love. Yeah, oh, baby. Science. Yeah, baby. <laughs> All you got to look, you just got to look at her and go, hubba hubba. <laughs> But you know, I didn't fall in love no, immediately. I was either. not in Finisterre. No. It was in, in our walk to Jerusalem after the walk. Um, Hold on months. a second. So <laughs> six months later. Nobody believes that. No. no so you... Uh, <laughs> i got to wrap my head around this. Because you just made the Hallmark moment go... Poof. I oh, know. I'm I'm it's sorry. terrible. So you met each other. You were buddies. Everything's groovy. And then you decide, hey, let's walk 5,000 kilometers. No, it didn't even happen didn't like even that. Happen no, that it didn't happen that way at all. It was so much more magical. No. Goodness. I had already, I had walked the Camino by myself back then. And I had I mean, received yeah. kind of the inspiration, if you want to call it that, a calling to do a path called the Way of the Soul. And the Way of the Soul led to Jerusalem. And I thought, that's really what I, what I feel like I need to do. I need to kind of walk towards that understanding of who I am. What is my purpose here? What can I do with my life that has meaning? Mm -hmm. And so I learned that while I was walking. And by the time I arrived in Finisterre, I thought, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk to Jerusalem and I'm going to do it alone. And so when this, actually the girl, the woman that brought him uh, to Finisterre was actually a pilgrim friend that I had walked with most of the way. This is what's interesting, how the universe kind of works. Yes. I had walked with her t almost the whole way to Santiago. She said to me, I really feel like walking to Finisterre. I said to her, I don't feel like walking. You know what? I'll meet you there. I'll take the bus and I'll meet you there. Well, in those three days of walking, she met Alberto and she walked him to me. And essentially we all met and he was to me just another pilgrim for me the same. Yeah. And she was the one who was acting as our translator. When I said to him, I'm thinking of doing this walk to Jerusalem. And he said, wow, that sounds really good. And that was it. Yeah. That was the end of it. He said, you know, good luck and buen camino, which you will learn to say a great deal when you get on the camino. <laughs> I won't be saying a thing. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. But you will oh, hear it. You'll yeah. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually separated that very same day with never, no intention of seeing each other. You didn't have again. any little tingly, no. tingly, nothing? Nothing. No, I told to my friends in Cadiz, from where I come in yeah. Spain, yeah. I told to my friends, I had met a pilgrim that is thinking to go to Jerusalem. Oh, they'd be, wow, that is crazy. That's crazy, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then she made an impact, but not in the romantic way, but yeah. more in the, what she was trying to do. I was a walk for peace then. That, uh, but I didn't know her. Right, know. right. But I didn't see myself that in that adventure. And really, it was it literally was just two strangers, two pilgrims meeting each other. We he said, "Great, good luck," and then we separated. But what I didn't know was that he and that pilgrim friend of mine, her name is Hannah, they had actually begun a relationship together. Later. I left them, later. and they later started a relationship. And he moved to Germany to be with her, and they were starting their life together mm. as a, in a in a romantic relationship. And I was still making my preparations and still trying to get my head around the idea of walking by myself, you know, going on a pilgrimage of this length, mm -hmm. there is no path, right? There's no path. No. There's nothing actually marked out for no you. No yellow arrows. No nothing. yellow arrows, nothing. Yeah. And so it was as I was making my way to Rome to begin walking that I connected with Hannah again. I said, hey, I, you know, I'm on my way. She goes, hey, you know what? Come, come and see me. She goes, I'm in Germany. I'm on your way to Rome. Just stop by and I'll send you off with a proper pilgrim meal and then you can go. Well, when I got to Germany, he was there. And, and I didn't, didn't know. I, I had didn't no know idea. that she was coming until the last oh. day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you would think, oh, sparks again. But it was Still nothing. no sparks? Still no no sparks. What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> you're both very good looking people. Actually, uh, Moni, you're the one that looks more Spanish. I know. <laughs> yes. You get Everybody's that all the time, right? All the time. Yeah. 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 He looks Canadian. I look Spanish. Yeah. I get that all the time. Yeah, it's yes. so funny. It's so funny. But when I, when I said to him, you know, I really feel this as a calling that I, I need to do this. Yeah. It was then that he, he resonated with that. And that's when he said to me, I think I, I feel that I need to make this pilgrimage with you, not because of me, 
but because of the path and what the path promised and the journey into the unknown. And so obviously yeah. Hannah wasn't too thrilled with that. <laughs> because she, she didn't want to go. She didn't want to. And I actually invited she her. She offered to, yeah. to her to go and she offered to me. And she, she was starting a new job. Mm. Uh, was, uh, and then, uh, so when did it happen? Get to the point, man. When did it happen? They're not going to believe this. And nobody believed this when we were walking. We yeah. walked for six months together. Five and there months, was, yeah, it was, in, what, once we got into Greece, yeah, it in was Greece, spring so. time you, uh, wait, in you, Greece. You guys are together now because the way you're arguing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We've been together <laughs> for, what, 12, 13 yeah, yeah. years We now. had a doubter too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you'd had been, you had been walking for how long? I would say a good five, five, months. five or six months. We and there was know. still nothing. Nothing. There's still nothing. He uh, was it, like an annoying brother uh, to the, me. Yeah, we had yeah. more fights than the other thing. Exactly. Even when we were walking for <laughs> peace. Right. Yeah, we had Hold a lot on. of fights. So you're walking for <laughs> peace, fighting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not in love. No. no. When no. did the love happen? When did it? Who <laughs> made the first move? <laughs> M well, yes. In so Alberto? I, I was the one that fell in love right. first. And was, um, yeah. I can see tell this. You I see this like a bullfighter scenario. <laughs> Okay. What's, right? what's that? What's <laughs> a big fight that we have? Thank and you. When we had the big fight, the, the masks fell down, and then I could see her. You know, and I could see that what I was uh, judgment uh, I was complaining about was only something she was doing whatever she could at that moment. Yeah. And I could see the good in her. I could see her good intentions, and in that moment was when there is something. Uh, the music. The, oh <laughs> the music God. began. Then. I had been <laughs> wrong. I had been wrong about the. Uh, so about her. so yeah. did you? Did you say, like, did you verbalize it and make your intentions known? In hey, that moment, did you no. write her a note? <laughs> will, will you date me? I, <laughs> yes, I, I no, didn't maybe. Know, I didn't know what happened, but the next day it was so much nicer with her. That's right. That I, was what, what I feel. And I, he I, offered I, to carry <laughs> some of the weight of my backpack. Yeah, that oh, and that's I love. Was, <laughs> that is love. <laughs> what <happened here? laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. And she made me suffer the next two weeks. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't, I, I wasn't sure. That's a woman. Sure. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know. So, okay. <laughs> so, so what was the first, was it a kiss? Was there a hand holding? Was there extended eye contact? When when did it switch? I'll, I'll tell you when it switched You know, it's me. taken me 15 minutes to get to this, right? <laughs> I'll tell you how it switched. Yeah. Yeah, it switched, well, it was in, we were in Greece, and I had become violently ill that night. I was vomiting, and I don't know. Okay, I these are not great I stories. know, I tell yeah, you what. Wait, and wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. second. <laughs> it was vomiting, hold, hold. and hold, hold that thought. <laughs> it was actually, I was physically sick, like vomiting and other, releasing and other from other places. Right. And he actually came in to help me, and I said to him, please don't. And he said, I'm going to look after you, which was when he actually, he took me, he helped me to clean up. He cleaned up uh, the vomit, she was which bad, was... Yeah. When That's I love. saw that, Again. I thought yeah, that only love would do this. Only I wouldn't love. do that. I know. <laughs> 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 no. Only love would do that is when I finally appreciated that. I was concerned about the complications of walking with somebody that you know. You know, all the things mm. that come up in being in a relationship. But we were more afraid that, to lose yeah. our path because we were yeah. very committed with what we wanted to do and the spiritual or the inner journey. Yeah. And we knew that to fall in a relationship was to lose the control, become crazy, <laughs> the emotions, you know, up and down. And then we, we didn't want that. For that reason, we didn't. We had nothing until that moment. Why well, didn't think until that yeah. moment into in, in nothing? Yeah. And for her, it was the same. You know. That's when it started. <sighs> I know. That was an exhausting story. <laughs> it's fun though. I mean, you had vomit. You had yeah, diarrhea. Exactly. There was there was Cleaning hatred. Up, there yeah. was anyway. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to get a, you know maybe a movie deal out of this. <laughs> I got to work on that script a little bit. <laughs> what? Is it about the Camino? Is it just because it's a, it's an, it's a trail with markings that's easy to follow, and there's places to stay, and you don't have to keep pack camping stuff, and there's long bits of quietness, and that there's social as well. So, you know, it, or or is there something supernatural about it, Moni? Okay. Well, you know, I'll give you, I'll sprinkle a little bit of magic on dust on this whole story of the Camino. Okay. Long before Christianity came onto the path, this was a path that was walked also by pagans. It was walked by Celts. It was walked by sun worshippers. Why? Because this was a path that runs directly underneath the Milky Way. And so they believed that this path was imbued with a special energy that was 
coming down from the stars as well and so when especially the sun worshipers when they walked they were walking in a reenactment if you will of the sun being born every day and the sun dying every day in a symbolic way as we as individuals are being born anew every single day mm -hmm. and what we believe and how we see the world in ourselves and our spirituality and how we die a little bit every day to those old beliefs and old um, old thoughts that no longer serve us so it was a, it was a reenactment in physical terms of what they felt was happening in the spiritual world and so and when they got to the end which is where the sun finally set is when they carried out all of their rituals of baptism and and burning away all their old clothing and so for me it is more than just simply a nice route that's well marked yeah you can walk it for that you can walk it as a nice hiking route it's a cheap way to travel you have accommodations there's culture there's food there's wine there's cathedrals there's all kinds of magnificent outer things to kind of distract you sure. but truly for me if you walk with that intention the Camino is a place where you can definitely connect with you your inner self okay um, did you grow up with God stuff or church stuff or spiritual stuff or faith stuff or religion stuff no in fact my, my I was baptized in the Greek Orthodox Church that's my official religion but right. my family was not practicing they no, never okay. went and did anything we walked into a church when there was a wedding or a funeral right. that was it and really my spirituality and your spirituality it only really emerged after like you know we each go through our personal crises mine was a divorce and that kind of brought took me down the path of investigating what it is like who am i you start asking the questions right you know who am i why am i here alberto did you have a personal crisis before you went on the camino? yes i had to uh, more or less at the same time that she had when she was in canada i was in spain for me it was to uh, a crisis especially because well, I grew in a very religious family, uh, a Catholic, conservative, religious family that they teach me, that I appreciate that they teach me that God is love. Mm -hmm. You know, that for me was fundamental. That's a good start. But when I grew, um, there was so mm, many contrasts, so many contradictions, I would say, in the belief system with what I could see in, in my life. Mm -hmm. Then in some moment I lost uh, faith in, not only in the Catholic, but in everything, I would say. Why? I, because I didn't understand if God is love, why we go to we can go to hell. Right. If know. God is love, then For why example. is there hell? If God is love, uh, why does so, so much so bad happen in the world? So many other things. Yeah, yeah. Because I was very uh, to the book, you know. Yeah. And then, um, but with time, uh, uh, the crisis arrived when I was living a life that I, I didn't appreciate. I was working in an insurance company, like uh, Jane, uh, claim claims adjuster, adjuster. Claim adjuster for a few years already and I couldn't be the artist that I feel that I, I like it arts, I like it to paint. Fine I, arts. I didn't have time for that no. because my work was all the time. And then I started to see my my life like a gray road that was bringing me to a place that I was not going to be happy never uh, about. Mm. And the death of a close up, my best friend in an accident, uh, put the first seed about that I needed to live my life with a purpose because this could happen to me. Uh, you know that my friend died and the life is can be very short mm. can happen tomorrow and the, in that moment is no i need to do with my life something that makes sense and from that moment i wanted to be an artist but my you know my couple at that time my, my girlfriend for many years my family needed money then i was helping in, with my work i didn't find the moment to quit my job and this brought me to almost a depression possibly a depression i didn't went to the psychiatrist or psychologist but i was feeling very 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 bad and when I was feeling so bad, I arrived at that moment, I say, I cannot anymore. I need to quit everything. I cannot live more in this way because I prefer not to live if mm -hmm. I'm going to live in this way. That's when I found a book in a shell of my mother that she's very, she's, I, I told you, she's very Catholic, very mm -hmm. religious. Mm -hmm. And there was a book that day when I had decided that what, something was going to change. I was not going to come back to my office. A book was coming out of the shell that put, I remember clearly, you can heal your life. In Spanish. In Spanish. Obviously. So the name of the book is You Can Heal Your the Life in Spanish. <laughs> we do the in Spanish. Oh, I see. In <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> I don't know. It's a very famous uh, book. Uh, and that was the first one. This Luis Hay is the, the writer. Right. But that showed me the book is that was another way to perceive spirituality, another way to perceive ourselves, the uh, questions, like Moni said, to, uh, the answers to who you are, who I am, why I am here. I always had the answers that Catholic Church, conservative Catholic Church, uh, ch teach me. Mm -hmm. Or, if I, that was is, is, is I didn't choose that, there was nothing. In Spain, there was nothing. So you are Catholic, 
or you are atheist. You know, that was the option yeah, that I had yeah, at that time. Yeah. But in that book, I could see, you know, there are other ways to perceive life. There are other ways to perceive spirituality. And I found again God love. I found again a, a, a God that loves us and that doesn't condemn us. And there is a purpose with life, in life that is love. And there is a reason for that we are here, and he's based in love. And all that I read in that small book in that, in that day, that was very fast, makes sense to me. And I was feeling in my, in my, you know, in my body and everything that, you know, this makes sense to me. And then since that moment, I started to read, uh, to look more on psychology and other, and become a seeker, uh, but a happy seeker. That mm. was the difference. Sure, sure. You know? I could listen to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> We can talk forever. Okay? <laughs> yeah. um, can you do me a favor just to lighten the mood just a little bit? Can you repeat after me? Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> Inigo or Indigo Montoya? My name is Indigo Montoya. My name is Indigo Montoya. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. My name is Indigo Montoya. Yes. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> sing it, sing it. Tu mataste a mi padre. Prepárate para morir. <laughs> Chills. <laughs> Too much fun. Um, Princess Bride, folks. That's what we're talking about here. Um, yes. So, okay. Walking for peace. Really? Yeah. Like, what? I don't get it. What is peace? Well, mm. but, 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 yeah, I mean, and you're walking for peace. Like, okay, obviously, you know, you're like a, the, the uh, beauty pageant contestant. What do you want in the world? World peace, right? Mm. Um, and, and I think if people were forced to come up with uh, the greatest thing that they'd like for the world they would say that sure mm -hmm. okay but it ain't gonna happen and then you guys go walking forever for peace and i don't understand the connection between the two help me understand how okay. you guys walking for five thousand kilometers yeah. helps world peace yeah yeah, actually, we got that question a lot. That's um, a very good question. It was, it was, I thought it was an awesome, unique it's, question. It's a wonderful question, <laughs> not, too. Not everybody asked that question. It's too polite for to ask that question. <laughs> yes, I'm not good. polite. <laughs> yeah, not good for you. No. We want that question. I'll, I'll tell you my reasons for doing it, okay? Um, I'm Lebanese. I was born and raised here. But my parents are, are immigrants. They came from Lebanon in the 1960s, and we still had family that was living in Lebanon. And so I grew up in a household where, you know, I think every Arab household has that those conversations going on in the living room all the time. You know, what's happening here? What's happening there? Who's aligning with who this day? And I grew up with this whole um, framework around you know what is justice and what is peace that was just part of my upbringing and i kept hearing the slogan you know if there is there's no justice there's no peace no justice no peace and i and i believe that even though i didn't fully really understand what justice meant or what peace meant but i i to me it was just all what everybody else said now when i began my own spiritual quest i started to really question well what is justice really what does that mean what does peace really mean <clears throat> Where does it come from? What is its root? And what is the way to make sure that you keep it within you? I was I read a great deal about Gandhi, obviously, and so I was influenced a great deal by him in the sense of saying, if you want to create peace in the world, you really must look at the conflicts within yourself. Mm -hmm. You must look at reconciling what is divided within you. And it sounded nice initially, um, but I didn't quite buy into that because I was very much action oriented. You got to go out there and do something about it. You got to have a protest. You've got to have a march. You've got to do something. And it was in the, in the process of walking, in the process of meeting different people, because you got to think we were walking literally into the unknown every day because we didn't know where we we're going to be every day. And so every new experience, every encounter was really forcing me and Alberto, I would say, to look at myself, to look at my beliefs, to look at my judgments, look at my prejudices. Mm. And it became my way of beginning to live what Gandhi was trying to say, which is to say, you cannot bring it to the world if you yourself are filled yeah. with hatred with anger with division with whatever it is all of these are preventing what is naturally i believe in the human heart to come out and so the work became how do i heal this how do i reconcile this how do i make peace with all of my personal demons but why did you, ha you have to walk five thousand kilometers to do it why couldn't you just go to your therapist like most people do <laughs> well you know some people are happy just sitting there and meditating sure yeah and but mine i felt like i was 
an action. I was in motion. Right. And the idea of different experiences, unique encounters every day, and really becoming resilient was very key to me because it's very easy to get stuck in a certain way of thinking and not move. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're in a different situation every day, you're having to expand in ways that perhaps just going to a therapist. That's really well said. You just wouldn't yeah. wouldn't yep. be able no, to do. No, I get it. Totally get it. Yeah. Because yeah. I've I've been asked. You know, why are you doing this? Yeah. Yeah. And people certainly want to know why I'm doing it not talking. Um, and I've stumbled over my answers because I'm not 100% clear on, on my answers. Because if, if you're in hot pursuit of authenticity, you shouldn't need to go and do something for that, ch for that thing to kind of, you know, mm -hmm. it should happen in your living room if you're in hot pursuit. But I think these moments and these, these, uh, these trails, these incidents, um, scenery, um, different location, I think they, they kickstart something, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of us, especially I think maybe North Americans, you know? Yes. Of course. And, you know, there is something very powerful about, in a way, parking your life for a little bit, yeah. your daily routine. And but aren't we spoiled are? to be able to do that, I though? Know. I mean, <laughs> who gets to take time off and go walk a stinking trail? Not I many know. people. Sometimes to suffer bring you to that point, you know, like us, you know, uh, to find yourself yeah. uh, lost, uh, open the door to try new things. Um, and for me, it was uh, a little that way. But I had seen in El Camino how the pilgrimage had a powerful it's uh, magical, it's like a powerful magical tool because uh, we believe, I believe, I, I, I experienced that life is like a pilgrimage. So I, I think this is a journey from when we are born, even maybe before, mm -hmm. and to, uh, towards we die, no? or even later, you know, but it's a journey. And it's a journey where we are growing and we are learning and we are experiencing, we are meeting new people and new ideas and new, and then it's uh, always a process, you know, it's, I cannot stuck. I, I need to be always open to grow, always to, always open to learn, because there is so much more to to discover. Um, have either of you walked the Camino again? Yeah. Yep. Both I of have. you many times or separately? Separately. Separately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've gone back because we were living in Spain for seven years in his hometown. Okay. And so it wasn't as much of a big deal to go up to the Camino to say, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go to the Camino. I'll be I'm back just go, next yeah, week. Yeah. Uh, it was a little difficult because we had a doubter already yeah. at that moment. You had a what already? A doubter. Uh, we, a daughter, we married. A child. Oh, I heard adultery. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know about this. Okay, yeah, you had a daughter already. Okay, Damn, so how many boys. children do you have? What? Just one. one. And how old's your daughter? She's twelve. Okay. Yeah, she came literally uh, just after we finished walking after we arrived in Jerusalem. Hmm, uh, let me do some math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, she was born the same day that um, one year after. No, one year after of that when we are uh, yeah no one year no two two years after well i we began walking together because i started exactly. walking it's a longer story but i started walking from rome alone until he cleared up his kind of situation with hannah right. he joined me later but the day we began walking together the on five. december the 5th of 2001 hmm. and, and our was daughter one. was born december the 5th yeah, that's cool. of 2003. 2003 that's cool and we didn't really appreciate that until much yeah. later we we're looking through our diaries so. a new walk begin. a new pilgrim yeah. Yeah. today's camino gurus here on the Drew Marshall show is Monet and Alberto. <laughs> I don't like the Camino Guru theme. Yeah. The I know, <laughs> none of the gurus no, like it. No, I, I, I know like that you say. Yeah, I'm just yeah, being cheeky. Anyway. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to call you experts. That's oh worse. Gosh, that's worse. <laughs> uh, they are authors of Walking for Peace and Inner Journey. Their website is walkingforpeace.com. I don't know how you got that website. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Walkingforpeace.com. Um, what... If there's somebody listening who's been tuning in uh, specifically about all this Camino stuff, what is the one thing you would say to somebody to help them, you know, push them over the edge? You know, mm. you, you're not going to convince someone to do the Camino because I think there, I've heard this many times. The Camino finds you. Yes. True. I, I would I, say so. For me, what's that way too? Yeah, I would say so. But but what is it? It's just sell it. What is one thing? Someone's listening. They've heard all this Camino talk last few weeks, and now you guys are in. Now look, the first thing they're going to say is maybe I'll find my uh, Alberto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true that many people go the trying Looking to for find romance. a oh, really? couple. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is gross. Um, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so what do you say? What do you say to people? Sell them on it. Why would, Why should they do it? Morning. I believe there is a great journey to be made moving from your head to your heart. Hmm. And I believe if you can 
be on pilgrimage, whether it's on the Camino or elsewhere. I mean, the Camino is the most popular, but there are other places as well. Right. If you can come to it from a place of being open to what's happening around you, open to the possibility that perhaps there is more to you and there's more to your life than simply what you're seeing in front of you, mm-hmm. then that it's important to let go a little bit of your plans and the need to control everything. And until you can do that, you won't feel anything. So, of the magic. so for those people who are achievers, doers, uh, task oriented types, um, this would be the best thing for them, but they are like the last person who want to sign up for this, right? You know what? I, I come from the corporate world. Yeah, I have an West, MBA. West I worked at Microsoft for yeah. many years. So right. I understand the analytical left brain yeah. need to plan and control. I get that. And I speak from the experience of saying it was important to me to be able to balance the need to, to control and plan with the letting go yeah. so I can experience the magic. Okay. And so this, is, this for me was important personally Good. on the inner planes. Okay, Alberto, you have one chance to convince <laughs> someone to oh. do the Camino. What do okay. you say? I will do, uh, I recommend to do the Camino because how Moni said before is to go out of your routine and to, and to try to find a new self that is already there in you. But I will recommend the same, to to trust. For me, to trust is very important. Not only to trust in yourself, to trust in life and to trust in in people even. To try to, that you don't need, how she say, you don't need to control everything. Open yourself to see what happened if you you are lost. Mm. What what happened? Maybe somebody happened to us many times. Somebody appeared in the last moment. Or a dog can and cross in your path and look at you and move the tail and say, follow me. You know, and and that is small miracles, that is small coincidences that have not uh, logic or you know in the statistics. You say, this is impossible that this happened just now, mm-hmm. and that happened all the time. Then to trust a little in, in your intuition, if you want to mm-hmm. call it that you don't believe anything, that is something that moves us and something that guides us, and you can find much better outside of your routine life where you are following an agenda and controlling everything when you are open and you're in a new world in a new adventure and that that is yeah. where you it's so much easier to find that magic you know? and you know what's beautiful about that is that now renewed and you're f- and refreshed yourself mm-hmm. you can bring that back mm-hmm. to everyone yeah, else that. because I, this is we're here to live in this i believe we're here to live in this world and we're here to bring this love this magic this joy we're here to bring it here and now, not to escape and go. Because there are people that will just keep going to the Camino over and over and over again. Because like, because life is on the Camino. Yeah, but life is here. Mm-hmm. And our purpose is to bring all of that here and to share that with everyone mm-hmm. consistently. To be a pilgrim in life. Is there not a sense of escapism in all of this? Could be. Yeah. Uh, especially if you come from a situation of suffer. It can be. But you know, who say that escape is not, uh, try to escape is not a way to, to reach the life or to reach a new perception. That's really well said. You know? Yeah. Um, too bad you didn't bring some of your artwork because oh. that's always good to bring <laughs> onto a radio show. <laughs> do do yeah, you, well, are, you're a professional that? artist, are you not? Uh, yes, well, uh, professional as I work, uh, that, that is that I do. I, I will write and we get talks and I, I paint. You guys can make I, money on this, huh? You write and you talk and you paint. And yeah, you well, uh, you know, this is we are not so uh, ambitious either. So we don't try to live a luxury life, yeah. um, you know, but we make Well, then you're living in the wrong city. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Ottawa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ottawa is all about, uh, well, yeah. never, never mind. Never mind, yeah. <laughs> Staying away from that one. Okay. Um, who, uh, you know, I've got Andrew McCarthy on the show next week. Talk to him about the, his uh, his book and his uh, story with the Camino. He he said to me in an email, um, "You're doing the thing silent. That's crazy. You have to be able to swear at the Camino, swear out loud at the Camino." <laughs> Do you understand what he's saying? Oh yes. <laughs> I guess what he's saying is eventually you're going to come to a point of, you know, walking 800 kilometers. You just want to, you're going to lose your brain at some point or, you know, lose your mind, go lose your marbles. You're going to go a little cuckoo. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's possible. Uh, and you'll suffer. There will be days when you are physically suffering and you'll, you'll kick yourself and you go, what am yeah, I yeah, doing, why, why am I doing, doing this? This? Yeah. this is like the stupidest thing I've ever done. Yeah. And if you can walk through that walk through that yeah. ask to be helped ask the Camino to carry you I asked the Camino so many times like please just carry me because I can't take another step there's no cabs there's no there are cabs <laughs> oh, there actually are? <laughs> yes. just no, for those, I'm not doing that ever. <laughs> there are those who just simply can't walk anymore and this is something I think for pilgrims that's important to understand there is no right way 
to be a pilgrim. You know, I what I have sensed so far, and I, I don't know if I can verbalize this yet, but the, the amount of people I've spoken with about the community, you know, I just spoke with Jane Christmas yesterday, who mm. again wrote a lovely book about it, and we, all these great conversations I've been having, there, there seems to be, everybody has a little bit of... Are you, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Everybody has a little, I don't know what that is. Is it a, I'm a Camino person and you're not yet. And so you need to listen to me. I don't know what it is. You, you can find that too. Uh, what is the, but you can find it. And you know what? Players. I brought that up with you guys because I didn't get that from you guys. Uh, no. That's uh, why I brought it up with you guys. Uh, because I had find people that were doing the El Camino for uh, no wrong reasons, but for tourism or simply for because it was cheap. And I had seen them chain in El Camino. Yeah. Then what matter what brings you there is you are going to reach the point that yeah. um, mm -hmm. or we are being pulled. Yeah. You know, if there's one thing that I would encourage any pilgrim to do is and you'll find this once you get on the Camino, you have to have the courage to really walk your own path. You yeah. will find people who are older than you who are going at twice the speed that, that you are. Jerks. Can oh, I jerk? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my first week on, you know, because I come from the North American yeah, competitive, yeah, yeah. Go, I try to go, go, go. I was swearing at them because like, can the, you yeah, keep yeah. going when I'm just suffering over yeah. here? And so I really would encourage pilgrims to get rid of any ideas that they have about what it means to be the perfect pilgrim and to have the perfect pilgrimage. It does not exist. No. What exists is your path and your Camino and what it is that you need to do. Mm -hmm. And maybe your pilgrimage includes having somebody carry your backpack because you physically cannot do that anymore. Tori, Tori, <laughs> that's your job, you're carrying my backpack. I meant the taxi service, but oh, okay, sorry. if you okay. want to give it to somebody else, right. that's, a, that's, that's a possibility. Yeah. What's the but point of understand? having an intern if you can't give it a backpack? Back. Well, but you I, get my what I'm yeah, saying. Totally, yeah, totally. I, I will recommend to try to do, um, you know, to carry your bag. I will recommend. Oh yeah. You know, because uh, that is a great satisfaction when you arrive and you see I did, I did this yeah. with all help. But when you can't not, yeah. you cannot, and you might you need to be patient and uh, compren comprehensive. Yeah, you need to uh, understand, understand it, understanding with yourself, to yours yourself, and with the moment where you are, and yeah. with the situation. You know, it's, it's it's all is very relative. You know, it's um, yeah. Yeah. Like for somebody who has an illness, for example, and there are people who go on the Camino who have illnesses. Yeah. For them, just to be able to walk five kilometers is a huge accomplishment. And for them, it's like me or you walking 25, 30. Mm. So who am I to sit in judgment of somebody else's Camino? You know, the, the, the thing that has helped prepare me for this battle with my ego has, and I never thought I would ever give any credit to yoga. But a year ago today, I walked into... Uh, a, a yoga studio in my hometown and then uh, the following week I did a class a week because I used to make fun of yeah, I still <laughs> kind of make fun of yoga. <laughs> who, who am I trying to kid but I, you know that whole scene and crowd or whatever I, yeah, I never get into it but then I did it for a week and I got my butt handed to me mm -hmm by people who should not be handing me my butt. And my <laughs> ego took a beating that week. It was unbelievable. And But it was so, I, I see this as a bit of preparation for the Camino. Yeah, yeah. Right? And yoga is great. I, um, <laughs> we, we're laughing because we have a, a joke between us. But anyways, joke yeah. because we joga. But <laughs> money, money practice yoga. A lot. Okay, Always. all right. No. <laughs> well, I want to, I want people to know all about you, which is why I brought you on the show, and I'm so glad you made all the trek all the way down from uh, Ottawa oh, for this. Sure. Walkingforpeace.com. Beautiful souls. Love these guys. Moni and Alberto. <laughs> Alberto. Alberto. <laughs> yeah. Roll up the rim to win. It's wrong. <laughs> wrong. That's Scottish. Um, authors of Walking for Peace and Inner Journey and so much more. Uh, lots on their website to, uh, to check them out. Uh, our experiences form the basis of our belief that change begins within and that action grounded in a consciousness of love is the most powerful elixir to heal all that is wounded in our world. Couldn't have said it better. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much. Oh, it was an honor. It was a pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you.